All right, welcome back to the Vault Report. I'm here with the latest USC commit, Josh Cohen. Appreciate the time as always. You know, crazy time of year. I want to get to it. But first, you know, just want to begin with just kind of the crazy process for you. You know, obviously, you know, leaving UMass, you commit to Arkansas. And then uh, you can tell me how many hours you were committed to Arkansas. But obviously, with Muscleman going to USC, just talk about kind of that process uh, and that, you know, 24, 48 hours for you. Yeah, it was tough leaving UMass. Um, you know, obviously in this new landscape of college basketball, it, you know, it's an ever moving, uh, a lot of moving parts. And, um, you know, I just came to the decision with my family that I was going to move on from UMass. Um, and, you know, the once I entered the transfer portal, it was crazy. Um, but I had done it before the, you know, with, you know, leaving St. Francis and going to UMass. So I kind of had a little bit of experience with the process. Um, I'm a kind of person like I want to get things done. Um, I was on visits early. Um, you know, I, I had two visits scheduled, had one more visit schedule was, you know, debating on going to that one. Um, so I went to us, I went to Arkansas, loved it there. Uh, loved the coaching staff. Um, it felt like it was a really good fit for me. Um, and then, you know, I still had another visit to go and I, I'm really close with coach Shrews and coach snow over at Notre Dame. So, um, I went and I went on a visit over there and, I had an amazing visit at Notre Dame. So, uh, you know, even if, you know, you have a bunch of options, you know, um, when you get down to two or three, um, it gets to be tough. You know, I had a really tough decision to make. Um, and Coach Drew's like, he's just like, if you know the kind of guy he is, it's like, you know, it's hard not to go and play for him. But, you know, I had met Coach Musselman and he's a different kind of dude. And, you know, I, I wanted to play for him right away. So um, I committed to him at Arkansas. Um, and, you know, it, it's one of those things like you can't you never know like what's going to happen in life. You know, things get thrown at you every which way. Everyone's like, oh, you knew. Oh, you knew this. I didn't know anything. I don't you know, I I, I just um, had committed to play for Coach Musselman. Honestly, like I had been on Arkansas's campus for like 24 hours. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like I was, you know, taking multiple visits. And, um, you know, I was there for 24 hours. The people were great. Um, I, I, I love checking it out. It was, it was it's a really nice school. Um, but in the end, like what, what people don't understand is you, you commit to a coaching staff. It's not really like the school is about five to 10 percent, you know, the fan base, five to 10 percent. You know, once you get there, the fans are, you know, everything. But um, like in the committing process, it's really like the coach and the fit. So for me, Coach Mossman, the coach and the fit was perfect for me. So I committed to him once he went to USC um, and he was about to do his press conference. He called me. And it offered me a spot at USC. So I had committed to USC. So it really wasn't like a tough decision for me. Like I love going to Arkansas, you know, but like I think Arkansas fans were a little offended that I didn't want to go there, but it wasn't like, like, yeah, it wasn't really like, like I don't know. Like I was committed to Coach Musselman, you know, it's yeah, yeah. it's one of those things like, you know, Coach Ruda, all those guys. And um, I built a relationship with them. It wasn't like I was going to stay at the school that they weren't at. So I, I put my commitment. I went to USC, and and you know I couldn't be couldn't be happier. Yeah, no, and I think you make a good point. You know, I, I think we're we're in an era you have fans, you got boosters, you have these programs. You know, and again, there's going to be people, and it is a different landscape of you know, you know, the school doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And I think you make a good point of like the school obviously matters, right? It means everything, but in in reality the number one most important priority is the coaching staff. You know, we talked about, I mean, and we'll, we will in a sec, going out to California, you know, I lived in Westwood. Uh, I lived on kind of UCLA's campus for about six years. You know, it's beautiful. It's amazing. You as a basketball player, you're spending almost the majority of your time in the gym and with a coaching staff, you're putting your trust in them. So, you know, even though I, I laugh at the Arkansas, I think obviously that was probably clear for most people on the outside. I mean, you, you didn't have much time to get intimate with the, with, with the university it's with the program and, you know, with Musselman, you know, what for you kind of made him special in a way to make that quick of a commitment to him. Cause like I said, you were one of the top big men in the portal nationally and you made your, your decision pretty quickly. What attracted you to him and his staff and his, you know, his coaching ability. A lot of people really don't understand my game, you know, and, and I'm not a kind of person like, Oh, I need to sit here. I need to do, I need the ball here. I need to do this. I kind of just roll with it, you know, like whatever it is, but not a lot of people understand my game and how I play. So, you know, when you get into these meetings, you do a lot of film, you break down a lot of actions, you do a lot of things that you watch a lot of their film and how they play, you know, and, um, 
And, you know, Coach Musselman understands how I play and um, how I fit to his system. Um, and and really, that's that's it. Like, he, he, he gets my game, um, and he wants to expand on it. He wants to uh, make me a better player and challenge me every day. So um, that's something that I, I really want. And, uh, you know, it, it's just – it's all about fit. You know, it's, it's something where – where can you see yourself um, – fit into the whole, you know, to the whole project. And then where, um, where, where you fit is great, but how can you also be challenged at the same time to be a better player than you were a year before? So like, it's kind of like a, it's, it's a tough, like, you know, in the portal process, you're talking to a lot of different coaches, a lot of different people. So you get like kind of like um, verbiage from everybody. You kind of take that, you realize it for a second, and then you start making decisions on where you want to go and visit and, uh, Coach Musselman and, and his staff did an amazing job of understanding my game and explaining, you know, to me how they can make me a better player. And also at the same time, you know, the one thing that we both had, uh, you know, we matched is it's, you know, it's not, it's also about like, how can I help the team and how can the team, you know, it's not so much like how much can they help me? It's how much I can help them too. You know, uh, like what can I bring to a locker room, leadership, stuff like that. So um, it really it really just fit perfectly. And also in the portal process, you know, I, I might be rambling on, but no, in no. the portal process, there's two things that you have to do. Are you the missing piece or are you the starting piece? So like it's not like you don't want to be the person, OK, like I'm going to commit to the school where there's three guys in my position and, you know, like. Like, 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 you know, you, you have, an, you have options, you know, in the portal, like, I mean, hopefully, you know, God willing people do, you know, when they enter the portal, they have multiple options. You know, you got to go where you're either the starting piece, you know, you're, you know, there, it's a new locker room, um, new, new set of, you know, there's a, there's a set of values in place and, you know, they're starting with you and then they, you know, they're, they're getting other recruits, you know, the locker room leaves and you're the, and you're the first new piece, first or second new piece. Or are you in a situation where, they have a team, they're missing that piece and you fit right in. So obviously, you know, I was a starting piece over at USC and, um, you know, it, it couldn't have fit my, where I wanted to go better. Yeah. And you talked about like growth being challenged, not just obviously being someone who, you know, you want to go in and do X, Y, and Z. You obviously want to be pushed. Now, now you different situation than maybe, you know, most in, in, in regards to kind of your value, obviously your value has been very high. Uh, and that's obviously a credit to your work ethic, your ability to, you know, play the, the game at a high level. For you, even at UMass, right? Because that was a, you you know, was a, you look at the jump from where you were previously to UMass in terms of the competition, the challenge. We talked about, you know, I talked to you before you committed to UMass. And obviously the challenges you were excited about there. What do you feel like you've learned in this past year that has helped you continue to build to where you are uh, and then kind of what that next step you're looking at. You know, I understand who I am. Um, I don't try and do things that I, I, I can't do. Um, and I play within, you know, my confines of the game. And, and I just kind of, I flow with the game. You know, um, it doesn't really matter what level you're at. Um, if you try and force shots, if you try and, you know, make plays that aren't going to happen, if you try and go for steal, like there's just little things that you can't do once you start going up at higher levels. And, and that's something I started to understand. Um, and, you know, playing at a school like UMass, you know, like I, I've been doubted since I've started playing, you know, basketball. I, I didn't, I wasn't highly recruited at high school. I had, my first offer was going into my senior year of summer and I really only had two division one offers in the D2, you know, so everyone said I couldn't play at the division one level. So then I went and I played at the division one level and I succeeded, you know, I went player of the year, yada, yada, yada. And I succeeded at St. Francis at that level. So then I moved up a level and went to UMass and everyone said, oh, he's not going to be able to play in the Atlantic 10. It's too physical. It's too athletic. And then I go out and make first team all Atlantic 10. Now I make the jump going from, you know, UMass to USC. And everyone's like, oh, he can't play in the Big Ten. It's too big. It's too physical. It's the same story. It's the same song that everyone's been singing. Yeah. Um, so I understand, like, you know, like you said, like, you know, in, in your question, like to answer your question, it's, it's basically like, OK, like now I'm moving up a level, like. What do I have to do? Like, how much harder do I have to work? And 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 what what do I have to add to my game? And what do I have to subtract? Like, you just have to like, you know, that's what you have to do at the end of the year. You have to like kind of take a week away from it all, understand what you did right and what you did wrong, and build on it. So I, I don't try to make it too complicated. 
Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. That's why I mean, actually I laugh when people, you know, and again, someone who, you know, I, I followed the Atlantic 10 for a long time. Um, you know, I, I laugh at, you know, even, you know, like I said, programs say, Oh, it's the Atlantic 10. And then, you know, program gets an Atlantic 10 player and, and you're the best person they've ever had. You know, if you can play basketball at a high level and you're like you said, you're a hard worker, you can play. I don't think there's any question about that. Although I, I do think that you're, you're there's no way you can play in the Big Ten. I think this is you're, you're going to it's not going to work out. Uh, I, I think you're, you're just not you're not great. <laughs> I'm channeling. I'm, I'm, chan I'm channeling my uh, my my inner the the inner uh the fandom that you see nowadays but you know jokes right. i mean it's either you know there's all there's about 95 percent hate and five percent love you know whatever we're 90 90 10 90 percent hate 10 percent love so you just gotta you gotta roll with the punches you know oh, i'm with you exactly that's how it is it is but you know i you know listen i appreciate you coming on and you know one of the main reasons like i said i think it you are such an interesting part of this pretty crazy domino effect in terms of coaching changes, you know, uh, on what kind of went, went on. And also because you, you've been through this process, you know, I do think it is insightful for people to kind of understand that process uh, and you to discuss it. Um, and, uh, you know, I do, I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate the time. And I, I think, I think most people say this, you, you're going to have a very good uh, next year as you continue to prove people wrong. So. Hey, listen, you know, my UCLA, my UCLA I fandom, I, I'm going to root for you at USC. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. You know, and anyone who says that the, the Atlantic 10 is not a good league, go look at, go look at the all conference teams. You tell me what, I mean, we had like, it was, it was a really good, and you know, it was a loaded league this year and, you know, and the Atlantic 10, like going from, you know, the NEC is a great league. I, it was great for me. I had an amazing four years, but going from the NEC to the Atlantic 10, you know, the, the guys are, you're playing against at the five spot, at least in my opinion, you know, are like, you know, 6'10", 280, 275, 265. Like, these dudes are big, you know, and and the players are all basically high, either high major players that came down a level or guys that were unrecruited or it should be high major. So it's just like a – it's a clash, and every team's got different rivalries, and you're in a different, you know, environment every night. And, you know, it was it was a really fun league to play in, so – you know, like you said, it's, you know, now I was a part of a crazy, you know, coaching carousel, transfer portal, this, that, and the third. And now I committed to USC and I could just go do my thing. So yeah. thanks for having me on, my man. No, absolutely. Crazy to say USC and Big Ten, but it's, uh, you know, it'll be a great inaugural year. And again, I know I know people are excited in uh, Southern California, big things ahead. So appreciate it, Josh. Thanks.